that it gives a more overall effect. So this is a bit more blobby and this is more overall effect. Choose your spray bottle with care and choose the right one. So our first tip, and this may be blindingly obvious, but it's worth saying, is that if you're using pan watercolours while you're setting up, a spray bottle is super duper handy for activating your paints. Spray it with clean water, set up the rest of whatever you're doing, and then when you come back to your paints, they will lift a lot more easily because they'll be pre-moistened. The second use of um, a spray bottle, and I will actually use ones that have got, have got the paint in, is to stencil. I've grabbed something out of the garden here. You want something that lies fairly flat to your paper and you can just spray all over it with your paint, lift it away and you will have a negative image of what it is you've put there, whether it's a chain, a piece of string or, or a, say, a bit of plant life. And this could be really, really nice for backgrounds and for a very quick sort of way of getting the impression of something going on without the detail. Of course, if I'd used the blobbier spray, we would have got a less dramatic effect. It wouldn't sh show up so much. So again, just think which one you use. A second way that you can use spray bottles with paint in rather than clean water is to add colour to a painting. Now, particularly if you're painting on watercolour on canvas that you've prepared with watercolour ground, you'll know how easily paint lifts. And if you wanted to give a haze of colour to an area, then a spray bottle is a great way of doing that without disturbing the colour underneath. I mean, the same holds true on paper. If you've done lots of layers and glazes and filled up your paper and you just want to maybe warm an area up or give it a slight glow, then using a spray bottle will give you a film of colour without disturbing any of the, uh, the, the paint underneath. And just to illustrate what I was saying about stenciling and adding colour to paintings, if you look at these parrots, can you see these paler lines that sort of echo the, the shapes of their um, tails? Well, this is painted on canvas and, and the paint lifts so easily. So I wanted to add some more interest and I put little sort of circular masks and ripped up bits of kitchen towel, placed them in the right place and then sprayed with paint to create this effect. And it was just a way of adding another layer of colour without disturbing what was going on underneath and to bring a glow of colour to different areas. So our spray bottle can be handy for two other things as well brilliant for softening edges. Usually if we were painting an area and wanted to soften an edge we might use a damp brush and just pull the paint away like that and you would get a soft edge. But you can use your spray bottle and I would just use my hand to mask it and then you get a far more random soft edge. Our spray bottle is also really handy for creating blooms. So again, if I just sort of paint an area and I need to let that dry for about a minute, so I'll cut that bit out for you, don't worry. Right, that's settled for about a minute and the, the shine has gone off it. And I've chosen a spray bottle which is a little bit blobby. So I'm only going to depress it gently to get little drops rather than that big spray. And I hope you can see that each little drop of water has created a tiny bloom. So that can be a lovely way of breaking up an area 
of pigment that maybe looks a little bit boring and blooms form when you put wetter paint or water into a drying wash and certain colours will form blooms more, more readily than others. So a few more uses for your spray bottle and again this may be blindingly obvious just good for getting your paper wet. Of course you could use a brush. Ooh, didn't realise that was dirty. Um, if you had a clean brush of course you could use a brush but a spray bottle might actually be a quicker option. Then moving paint around. I've got this piece of paper and I've marked in a horizon. Now say I wanted to do a very dramatic sky. I don't know what this painting is but you know I put in some colours that I've carefully thought about or not as the case may be and I think oh yeah yeah I'm going to tilt this and I'm just getting sort of furry caterpillars going on here rather than this dramatic sky with sweeps that I want so if I use my spray bottle I can move the paint to where I want it and tilt my paper and suddenly I don't have my furry caterpillars but I can get the movement and direction to the paint that I want. And let's have a think, you know if this was going to be, if this was the sky and that this was a lake or sea or something and I needed some um, reflections in as well. I can also, oh this is a bit wet, but I can use my spray bottle to move some of that colour down to reflect if that was water there for example. So I can use my spray bottle to get direction as I see fit. And then the final use of a spray bottle is to actually keep your surface wet. You know as a watercolourist that if you let your paper dry you can end up with hard edges in places that you don't want them. So say you're working on quite a large piece and you're doing some detailed work over here and you don't want hard edges over here then you can spray and keep edges workable and keep things moving while you do what you need to do so that you don't end up with hideous hard edges where you don't want them. So in conclusion your water bottle, your little spray bottle should be your new best friend. Brilliant for pre-wetting your palette and activating those colours, fantastic for stenciling, 